We've got the VSA-1250, and this is not rigged professionally. When we install it, we'll actually install it correctly. We've got it hooked up to RDNet. Just gonna go over a couple of specs on this guy. So it does have 12 Class D 50 watt amplifiers. And that's what allows each one of the little tiny uh, three and a half inch Neo drivers to be controlled separately and have the DSP of each one. So 48K 32 bit processing, which is pretty awesome for what this is. The thing that was very interesting to me, 94 dB max SPL at 30 meters instead of being at one meter. So this thing can actually shoot pretty far and still be somewhat loud, especially for speech. So most time you'll see that being at one meter and it'll say 140 decibels or something crazy that is just not very usable, but at 30 meters it's quite useful. So horizontal dispersion is 130 degree horizontal, which is pretty wide and pretty useful for some things. And then our vertical coverage, 10 to 30 degrees, and you can steer from zero to negative 40, which is also very useful. We'll take a look at it in a minute. So it comes with everything to install, which we showed you earlier in the video. We're gonna go into RDNet in a second and let you hear what this thing does with human voice and with some music. So once you're in RDNet and we actually load the speaker, it doesn't look like there's a lot until you expand out. So this shows all 12 of the amplifiers. So if you were to end up hitting this, it mutes the other 11 and solos the bottom woofer. So same thing here would be the top. So we will unmute those to where they're all unmuted. And then on our beams, you have quite a few different options. So easy beam is as it says, it's easy and it makes a beam of sound. So we're at two meters in height. So I will say sadly, even if you end up going into the advanced settings and you change this over to be in non-metric measurements, it's still metric for this speaker. All of your other stuff is not metric in RDNet, but this will still remain the same. So we're at two meters. This gives us the ability at two meters to very easily go from two meters to six and a half meters. It also allows you to go from two and a half to 20. And as you can see, lots of options. So the further out you wanna shoot, it does kind of limit you on how close you can shoot since we're beaming out. So we're gonna to go to this six and a half meters going 30 meters. And as you can see on our beam over here, it is making it quite a long ways. But if we were to take this and make it be extremely short throwing in this easy beam, which I guess this will be our shortest one, you can see that we're very focused down here. You'll be able to hear this in a minute when we actually do it. So easy focus, different than the beam, this kind of gives you the ability, which we'll go back to two meters, which we're at, to kind of have a focused sound and still have a little bit of shading on the outsides as well. So if we make it go to 30 meters, you can see that there is a little bit of overspray, I guess you could call it, which I don't know if they're doing plus or minus 6 dB, 12 dB, what they're actually doing with this. Uh, and then if you don't like easy focus or easy beam, you've got free beam where we're at two meters, we'll keep it at that. You can tilt this however you want to. So if we tilted it down 30 degrees, you can see the cabinet is actually shooting down 30 degrees. We can make our beam angle be 15 or 30 at that point. If we end up making this only shoot at 12 and a half, you have different options. So everything is variable. If you do zero degrees, it'll be straightforward. You can do as far out as a 90 degree coverage pattern, which is kind of insane. So lots of options with this speaker. Very good for the application we're gonna be installing it for, which is basically going to be speech only in a church of Christ. And we're going to keep all of the sound off the back wall, which in theory should allow us to not have to do anywhere near as much, if not any at all, on our sound absorption panels. So pretty cool, we're gonna let you listen to this instead of just looking at it and see what you think. So in this scenario, what we're ending up doing is we are going with what we're doing for the install. So we're gonna be hanging at roughly two meters. We're gonna do a tilt of 20, a beam of 15, which should make us start at around, I mean, realistically on our plane, we're gonna start somewhere around two or three. We're gonna make it all the way down here and it should keep the sound off of, with as long as the church would be, right here. So Tanner's gonna start talking and walking towards the speaker with a Countryman E6. One, two, check. 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 
One, two, check. One, two, check. One, two, check. One, two, check. One, two, check. One, two, check. One, two, check. One, two, check. One, two, check. One, two, check. One, two, check. There should be a tiny point. One, two, check. Where he'll get some high One, two, check. Yeah, right there. One, two, 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 check. But once he walks past One, it, two, check. One, two, check. It, he should be fine. One, two, check. One, two, check. Which is kind of crazy. One, two, check. So One, this will two. be our first test just to show you the rejection that ends up happening with a headset mic, which is kind of unbelievable. And then we're going to show you how we can steer this to go wherever we need it to. This scenario, we're going to show you how we are actually keeping most of this energy off of this back wall. So right now, Tanner's going to start talking in just a second, and we're going to have everything set to where it stops before it hits the back wall. And then we're going to change it and let you hear, which hopefully you can hear from this microphone, how much reflection we are getting off the back wall. So here we go. One, two, check. One, two, check. One, two, check. It's a very minimal. One, two, check. 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 And you can hear one, a lot two, more. One, two, check. One, two, check. Sound one, coming, two, bouncing off check. the back. One, two, check. So we'll go back, one, keeping two, that energy check. very close here. One, two, check. One, two, check. So at this point, one, two, check. We're going to have high frequency one, coverage. One, two, check. Till about right here. One, two, check. And you'll still hear it bouncing one, off this two, concrete. One, two, check. One, two, But when two, you get back check. to the back, one, two, check. You'll hear Tanner. One, two, check. One, two, check. But it's mainly mids one, and no two, highs. Check. So you're not getting nearly one, as two, much of that pinpoint energy. One, two, check. But as we approach one, the speaker, two, check. you'll hear one, much more two, of the high frequency. Check. One, two, check. One, two, check. One, two, so check. So on this one, we're going to be going back and forth between this two to six and a half to 10 and 30 meter which should get us to this back wall back here. So we're gonna start out with this one and I will be out here, just where you can hear the difference of, if I can get the focus on this thing to work. There we go. Of being out here with it shooting very short versus very long. And it will be in here. One, two, check. And this is the very short one, throw. One, two, check. One, two, check. One, two, check. Two this check. Is it throwing forward. One two check. One two check. One two check. Which is kind of crazy. Two check. Short throw. One two. I might get near this brick wall. One two check. One two check. Two check. And this is long. One throw. two check. One two check. One two check. Two check. One two check. One, two, check. One, two, check. Two, check. And leave it one, on long. One, two, check. One, two, check. Get one, two, check. And two, leave it on the long one. I'm one, just going to let you two, hear the difference. Check. Two, check. Of when you approach. One, two, check. The volume doesn't get one, two, drastically check. louder. Of one, course, two, out here, we're check. losing energy. One, two, check. 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 But it's not a massive One, two, check. One, two, check. And so on this one, I'm going to put the phone right here and let you hear the difference, or at least I'll go here. This is going to be sideways to where you can hear the reflection off the back wall versus the long throw and the short throw. So this is reflecting off the back wall. Two, check. One, two, check. One, two, check. One, two, check. And this is without reflecting. Two, check. One, two, check. There's nothing. One, two, check. One, two, check. One, two, check. And then here's back on one, back two. Wall. One, two, check. One, two, check. 
One, two, check. One, two, check. One, two, check. And you just hear one, the two, check. 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 One, two, 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 check. Two, check. One, two, check. And it just gets one, two, check. Slap back. One, two, check. One, two, check. Very nice. One, two, check. One. Great for vocal clarity. So the next thing we're going to end up going is some music. The music isn't great through these, especially with no subwoofer. Keep that in mind. But for what it's being used for, it's incredible. So now we got some music going. EQ is flat up here. And we are set pretty short. So we'll go ahead and extend this out some. Halfway thing. And we're going to go out and let Tanner switch between two settings of distances, which will be the very short and very long. This is set for us to do the very short throw, and Tanner's about to do long. With only these few which is pretty incredible. And I should have known. Back to short. You can tell it's audible, but not much. And then cry. I'm for me. Walk closer while it's on Had the side for us. Because today. But you can tell the vocals are what's shooting through. Not very good for a musical cat, though. But it doesn't get right ridiculously loud. Where I've really always been. I got over you long enough. Hold on. that volume, here's how we're running the 12 amps. So there's still a lot of output, but these are just not made for super loud volume or anything. We'll turn them up. It's you. These have a little gate that's built in to get rid of noise. So right now it's closed. We'll do a blurp of audio to open it. Yeah. Do that again. So if your system is quiet, you'll hear that there's no noise in the background. And as soon as somebody speaks, you will hear the amplifier. Yeah. But it is still very, very low when you're a couple of feet away. Some things that are available for purchase, you've got the VSA Smart RC that would plug into your iPhone or Android device, and you can use an app to actually control. And the app does give you all of the control that RDNet does. It's a lot harder to navigate around on. Much rather use RDNet, and probably by the time you buy that, you could have just purchased the RDNet software, or the uh, box, and used the software. So the other thing that's really cool that they have for these particular speakers is this little adapter that allows you to come in with a 100 volt uh, transformer. I don't know if it works on 70 volt, it would be even better if it did, but if you're in the very end of, if I'm understanding this correctly, the very end of a speaker line, it looks like you could come into this little guy and then it can input from the signal going to your last speaker that's being powered by an amplifier into the VSA and give it signal without having to run a brand new XLR cable, 15,000 feet or whatever you have to use. So pretty cool that is an option. Do not know again, again, if it does 70 volt or not, but definitely does 100 volt, which most of these new speakers will do 100 volt.
Shipping with the speaker, they do send this little IR receiver that can go on the bottom of it, and you have the ribbon cable to connect everything. And that allows you to use that app if you want to. They have multiple face plates that come with it, and also a bunch of Phoenix connectors. So speaking of that, on the bottom of the speaker, you have an aux input, a priority switch, and then you have a standby control, monitoring, and for data link. So up on the top is where you're gonna have your priority audio input, then you're going to have an aux input, which is what we're using. And with this is pretty cool. So if you have uh, aux audio in and you've got speakers that are playing some music and somebody picks up a microphone and they talk into it, it's going to take priority from the priority audio input, which would be your microphone and you'd be able to make an emergency announcement if this was part of a system for like a museum or somewhere. So pretty cool. You can also have a closed switch system to where you can turn off and on the speaker via a switch and it also has an auto turn off after 25 minutes. So I don't know if it's been quite 25 minutes since we've passed signal, but it might've been. So we're gonna try to turn it up just to see. And it must not have been 25 minutes yet. But if it does it, you'll end up really not hearing much of anything and then it just kind of turns on and it can surprise people and make them think there's problems with faders. <laughs> so pretty neat little system. Uh, a little bit pricey, but you are getting 12 amplifiers, 412 speakers, and a lot of control and a lot of research and technology to make everything sound great. So please hit like and subscribe. Let us know what other videos you want to see and give us a call if you need any gear. We can pretty much get you anything and it's 256-275-4734. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.